you the new substrate I was looking for? Or are you just a salt in disguise? Oh, holy allies, don't break my heart anymore. A bit of opera for you there, mainly to distract you from the lowbrow and stupid nature of what I'm about to show you. And first up, let me address the experienced aquascapers who saw the thumbnail and are already desperately scrolling to the comments section to tell me how stupid I am for trying this experiment. I knew there was a very, very, very high chance of failure with this experiment, and my research suggested that it wouldn't work. But upon finding no single article, forum post, or research paper specifically talking about polyhalite in aquariums, well, let's just say curiosity got the better of me. And let me also be absolutely clear, no livestock ever set foot in this test aquarium. This experiment was far too dangerous and far too stupid for me to put anything other than some plant cuttings at risk. But for the teeny tiny part of my brain that thought I could have stumbled on a new perfect aquarium substrate, the small likelihood that this project might go right compelled me to carry on. So let's go back a bit. It was summer 2023 and I was watching the news. There was a piece tucked away in the middle of all the usual chaos and gossip about how the UK was sat on a gold mine of fertiliser that had the potential to revolutionise agriculture. And this product came in the form of a small, granular, white, gravel-like product called polyhalite. This humble rock, which sounds suspiciously like a dietary supplement, is actually a powerhouse of potassium, magnesium, calcium and sulphate. It's like the avengers of plant nutrients coming together for the greater good of your petunias. The news have been buzzing about it, hailing polyhalite as the messiah of the fertiliser world. And why not? It's sustainable, it's effective, and let's be honest, it's got a bit of that underdog charm. And what can we expect from our newfound friend? Bigger tomatoes? Yes. Greener lawns? Most likely. Or perhaps the perfect aquarium substrate and fertilizer rolled into one. Well, let's find out, shall we? So I got to work making a simple scape in one of my cheap hospital tanks that wasn't currently in use. Despite it being an experiment with a high chance of failure, I decided to make it look interesting nonetheless. So I came up with this rock arch structure over a valley between two banks of polyhalite on either side. A little bit of super glue secured the rocks together and I took a bunch of cuttings from my Dutch style aquarium which I know can grow well in my water and would otherwise have gone in the bin. I planted them on either side of the rock arch, filled the tank up with some water, and switched on the small sponge filter which was nettled in the corner. Now, at this stage, let me just outline my working assumption as to what could have been a best case scenario. In my rather naive brain, this was just some sort of porous rock containing a high concentration of different salts. Essentially, I was thinking of this from the viewpoint of a traditional substrate with high cation exchange capacity, pondering whether it was like a pre-charged substrate. But in reality, polyhalite is a triclinic crystal system, or in layman's terms, a bunch of salts crystallized together. So it was no great surprise when the water started to look very briny and thick. You could literally see the salinity increasing over the next few days and salt deposits were forming on the edge of the glass and spitting from the filter bubbles onto the side of the tank next door. Ever the optimist, I conducted a few water changes over the next week, but it was pretty evident that the salt density in the polyhalite wasn't reducing to any noticeable degree. And as you can imagine, the plants hated it. They gradually wilted and withered away. After about five days, the wilting was really obvious, and by day 10, everything had turned to sludge. When I broke the tank down, the only other interesting point was just how rock hard the polyhalite had become as it clumped together. It was genuinely very hard to break apart, which is probably not great for effective root growth either. There was only one slightly unusual exception in that Christmas moss actually seemed fairly unfazed by its salty prison. Maybe because it's hardier and less complex as an organism, I don't know. Evidently, I'm not a scientist. But I was left with a few questions that might spark some debate below. 
Firstly, do you think you could still use this fertilizer in much smaller quantities beneath traditional substrates to provide fertilization at root level? I think potentially yes, but I wouldn't like to hazard a guess as to what would be a safe ratio. Secondly, do you think I might have had different results if I'd covered the polyhalite in this experiment with some sand? I suspect I would have still had the same leaching into the water column and the same thing would have happened over time, but perhaps over a slightly longer time frame. What do you guys think? I look forward to hearing your speculation and mockery in the comments section below. Normal, less stupid service will be resumed next week when I'm escaping with more traditional supplies. And for one of my other experiments, click one of the videos over here. Take care, and I'll see you soon.